Hi Floss Tube. My name's Jody and I'm Trixie Tricycle here on YouTube and on Instagram. And I'm also the dyer and owner of Cedar River Linen. But today we are not going to talk about the shop. I just posted a video a couple days ago um, that gave sort of initial shop updates following our launch. Uh, but today I'm just going to go through, I have 47 projects and this is just a quick opportunity. <laughs> quick. LOL. This is an opportunity for me to go through and document all of my projects and where I am. Um, I have not set this up in a chronological way. I tried to group them together um, uh, in, in groups of, in categories of designers. The whole first, probably two thirds of it will be samplers. Um, and then the end is mostly not samplers, but there are a couple of samplers that are thrown in. So I'm not going to do much editing here in the video. I am going to try and show thread counts, uh, linen dye colors, um, and the threads that I'm using, although I'm notorious for pulling threads from one project to another. And so the rings that I have that have the the project names on them and the tags and all that information, they may be missing a few of the colors that are needed because they might be in another project that I was working on more recently. So welcome to my brain. So without further ado, I'm just going to start out. The very first uh, sampler that I'm going to show you I actually just showed a couple days ago at the end of my video um, on the linen update, but I want to include it here because it is a work in, in uh, process. Yeah, work in process, work in progress. Hello. <laughs> My name's Jody and I can't words. So, uh, first project is by my very good friend Ellen, who has a new design company. She is designing cross stitch and she's fantastic and incredibly talented and uh, go buy all of her things. So her website is Maximum Cross Stitch and she currently also has her uh, paper charts, the uh, majority of them on the Evertote website. So this is called There Is Always Room and it is a adorable sampler with a very cute house and bird and flowers and cat and dog and another bird variables. Perfect. So I started working on this a while back, got some good progress, and then I opened the shop and I have not been able to work on it since. But I'm stitching this on my linen. This is some 46 count overcast. And this is as far as I've gotten. Uh, you can see that I customized the dog so that it looks like my little dog Charlie. who is upstairs with his dad because <laughs> he was a troublemaker in my last video and whined halfway through for the remainder of the video. Uh, these are the flosses and they are Roxy Floss Co. which you can also get at Evertote. And those are the beautiful threads that Carrie dyes. And I think this is <clears throat> I'm using obsidian as the gray for my house and it's got some really pretty obsidian is a really beautiful kind of variegated gray and brown and I think I didn't check to see if this is one that's in their regular rotation I may have gotten it as part of their uh, monthly floss club um, which if you're trying to build your stash that's a great way to do it um, and some of those uh, floss club flosses are things that they, you know, keep kind of in their, kind of in the palette, just um, it limited where they don't sell it like in the regular part of the shop. So it's kind of a neat way to get those. Um, but I didn't show that the other day and I think uh, somebody was asking about the gray. Anyway, I love it. Uh, the regular called for 
is ochre, which is also a beautiful brown with some gold, and it makes for a very nice um, brickwork on a house. And I think that's the color that Ellen called for. So, project number one. <clears throat> 46 to go. Uh, the next designer that I'm going to highlight is Modern Folk Embroidery. And the first project is the, this was the Holiday Countdown band sampler. I don't have a photo of it, although I think if you go onto the Modern Folk Embroidery website, you can see it now. Lots and lots of people got this. This was, a again, a Holiday Countdown through the Evertote store. And you got 25 different floss colors. Um, and then every day, pardon my reach, every day you would get a little card that you could open with the floss and it would have a portion of the the pattern and some other little treats and jokes and um, Caroline and Jacob both posted periodic either daily or a few times throughout the week um, videos that were really fun so the countdown boxes just went on sale again yesterday, I think, um, two days ago. So I know it's way in, in you know, it's February and they're not going to be shipping until later this year, but it was worth it. And just for the floss alone, um, all of these beautiful colors, some of which are in regular rotation now, but it was really, really fun to open those each day. Um, and so here is, as far as I got, I was actually keeping up with it until about the 8th of December, and then I had to start prepping um, <laughs> my shop, and this got forgotten. Um, not forgotten, just sort of was lurking in my stitching room. So that's the band sampler, and I think, again, that I think got me up to about maybe part eight. Really, really pretty. Um, and this is on uh, 40 count Panettone. This is a Roxy Flosco linen. So I love that and I will finish it at some point. Um, this next chart is also Modern Folk Embroidery. This is the LFB 1788 Red Deer Sampler. Um, I would take it out of the project bag, but the printing job that I've done on this is so poor that you probably wouldn't be able to see it much better. But it's gorgeous. Apparently Jacob found this um, original chart in a thrift store for super reasonable, which is kind of remarkable, but it's beautiful. And uh, I started this last year. I did my own Overa Soie conversion from the DMC colors provided. And this linen, let me keep doing this. Yeah, I think this is a, let's see, did I write this down? This is on 40 Count Milk Chocolate by x Design. And this is as far as I've gotten. But it's really pretty. And when he released this, he went and talked about a lot of the, he usually does that if you, I'm sure you've watched all of his videos, but um, if you haven't, uh, Modern Folk Embroidery, Jacob talks a lot about the motifs and the history and the background of a lot of the individual aspects of the samplers that he reproduces, and it's really, really fascinating, so I strongly encourage you. Plus, he's got a great voice, and he sometimes sings songs, so. These are the colors that I chose. Uh, it's kind of the DMC. I took, pulled the beat DMC and then pulled silk colors that were close. So it's a really quiet, pretty, soft palette. I love this. 
definitely want to get back to it. But I haven't worked on it for a while, so it's pretty, it's, it's good size, but it's not imposingly huge. So, Red Deer Sampler. The next one, and the next three are going to be Modern Folk Embroidery also. This is, uh, I just have a black and white printout of the chart, because I got it as a PDF. So this is Birds from Bernard's Books. Gorgeous. Lots of people are doing this one. This was a fundraiser for um, Caroline, who is also off the grid needle arts, for her husband, who was running um, the, I believe it was the New York Marathon as a fundraiser for brain aneurysm research, if I'm not mistaken. And this is as far as I got. I love this and I am using Cousin It. And Cousin It is a Roxy Floss Co. color that it, it kind of leans blue. It's kind of hard to see but you can see that there's, it's, it's black but it's got actually pretty distinct blue variegation that runs through it. And this is on Hello, I'm down here picking up things. I think this is on 40 count Frappuccino. Pacino. I'll have to look it up because I don't have it listed, but I believe that that's what it is. I think it's Frappuccino by XG Designs. But again, all of the details are going to be listed in below the video. So I'll include all of that with the thread count. And I'm stitching it just one strand over one. And I don't know that you can really see that blue, um, but a little bit maybe. Very pretty. Uh, the next one, I'm actually stitching on a piece of linen that I dyed, and it was during my kind of testing phase um, when I was trying to lock in the color Arboreal. And this color was one that did not make it, but it's a piece that I kind of liked and wanted to feel um, kind of the hand, you know, what it was. I mean, there's, it's not just the color of linen when you dye it, it's actually how it feels and how it stitches and if it stays kind of, if it, if it maintains its shape well enough as you're stitching it, if you're stitching in hand, if you're stitching on a scroll frame. And so I just, I wanted to stitch something on it. Um, and I had seen this, this was, came out right around the time that I was working on that. And this chart is gorgeous. This is called Fancy and ABC. It's enormous. And I'm stitching the white threads and the background, which he, this is just a digital rendering of the chart. Um, I'm leaving it at green. So I'm stitching this with uh, Oversoie 103 silk in the color 080, which is just a really standard off-white. And that's as far as I've gotten That's actually a lot of stitching. <laughs> this chart's huge. Abby Bella Stitch is pretty far. She's doing hers in red and she's doing it the other way so that she's stitching the color and leaving leaving what I have stitched 
part that I have stitched white, she's actually left that as, as the linen color and then she's stitching the other part. It's beautiful. And she's much further along than I am. Um, so that is Fancy and ABC by Modern Folk Embroidery. And the last one, and this is not on my linen, um, but this is a, I think this is Seraphim, and I believe that this is a little piece of, of color called Forest Floor. Um, which it runs a lot more yellow, but it's also, I really like it. And I started this about a year ago. This is called Mr. Bones in the Garden. And this is just stitched with DMC, one strand of DMC over two threads. I think this is, I think this is 40 count. It's a little tight, um, but this is a cute chart. This is from his Dark Crosses collection, Mr. Bones in the Garden. And yeah, I'm just using regular DMC acorn. So the next designer uh, is Whilst Iris Naps, and I started her black sampler. This was her submission for the black sampler November, kind of the inaugural year, um, and that was in 2021. It's really cute. And she, I think, updated it so that you can, if I'm not mistaken, I think she updated it so that you can actually stitch 2022. I'm going to need a new number, but <laughs> So I'm stitching it on this very small, I had a little scrap piece of, um, I think this is beige, might be weeks. It works beige. And it's a very long, thin, sampler. Come on, focus. There we go. And Christina's pretty brilliant with her color options because even though this is um, supposed to be a black sampler, her color palette, she's actually got, there's an off-white, a blue, kind of a variegated green gray a brown and then a black and all together it just really brings out some depth and um, it's really pretty so like those flowers at the top actually have I think four colors even though they just look like you know black sampler so pretty it's easy it's a it is actually a really quick stitch and I just it, it got put away in a bag and I haven't I didn't come across it until I started getting ready for this I'm like well, I've been working on this it's fun and cute still dropping things I have that in this project bag that I made this is some French general fabric The other one I'm working on by her is called Agnes Lyle. And this is a Scottish sampler reproduction. It's got that pretty white house. I love that peacock. There's a couple different birds on there. And then just, I stitched Anne Logan, which is another one of her samplers. And um, so many colors in the in the alphabet. It's really fun. She did the same thing with this one. And so that is where I am with that one. And I think this is just on a piece of legacy linen. Fairly certain that this is on 37 count Wayfarer's Cloak, which is one of my favorite legacy linens. It's just super neutral. Really good, 
really good linen workhorse. I love it. it. Makes everything look good. So that is that. And as far as I've gotten. And these are the called for colors. And I'm stitching it one over two. That bright pink and just pretty. Really pretty. I try to keep things organized as I go, but it's not looking good. Okay, the next designer um, is Hands Across the Sea, and I have one, two, three, six. I've got six projects uh, on the go. The first one is in this Curling Stones curling project bag that my friend Gwyneth, who's Curling Stones Cross Stitches, made for me. And the chart is Anna Sophia Burcham, 1871. And I started this last year around my birthday. I'm stitching this on a piece of, I believe that this is on Leo and Roxy porcelain. Yeah. So 40 count Roxy Flosco porcelain and I did my own silk conversion from the DMC colors. I didn't have every uh, Swat Alger silk color and so I kind of modified it a little bit and I'm pretty happy with it. It's pretty. This is such a pretty, pretty chart. So I'd like to be further along, but that's where I am for now. The next one is Mrs. Campbell. And that is this chart with the heart border. It says keep your work clean and pay attention to it. I got this, started working on it like crazy, and then I, I, I want to have more done on this, but I don't. So I'm stitching this with the called for DMC, one strand over two. And I think this is on, this is 40 count mushroom by Zweigart. So just their standard yarn dyed. It's so cute. I love it. These are the threads for Anna Sophia Burcham, by the way, that I chose. Love them. Super bright, super pretty. And then these are the colors for Mrs. Campbell, the majority of them. These are the DMCs. I think I may have pulled out one of the blues for something else, but The next one is Ann Thomas, which is that, oops, hold please. Ann Thomas 
Beautiful bird, beautiful floral border. I love it. The floss chart is enormous. I'm stitching this on 46 count. I believe that this is Old Stationery by Seraphim. And I'm stitching it with the 100, excuse me, stitching this with the called for 103 silks. And that's as far as I've gotten. Oh, it's so pretty. It's very, very tiny. Lots of color changes, but they're worth it. So I was going to start in the middle with the bird and then I knew that if I did that I would probably do the bird and then end up stopping. Um, not for any good reason, but just because sometimes I think when you do that, you get that big focus piece and it's like, it looks good that way. And I really wanted to get the border in first. So that's what I'm working on and I love it. These flowers are so pretty and in person, just 103 is on that 46 count. It's so nice. They're just nice and tidy and especially even, I know sometimes it's hard to stitch, um, to get white floss to look really tidy, to look really neat. And so this, that white flower right here, I don't know if you can see it. Am I, you know, I'm not an expert stitcher. I'm all right, but this just looks really, really pretty. It ends up looking really clean. So I know not everybody loves 103s. Um, I, I, I like stitching with everything. So Swaddle J, 103s, DMC I love. Uh, Roxy Flosco, of course, is that's my ride or die. I love, I love Karen. I love her colors. So if it's floss, I'm using it. All right, Rose and the Giant Pear. This one, you know, I don't know if you can see behind me, but back here is my G. Leger. I finished that a little over a year ago, and I modified the Rose and Giant Pear color palette to be a little closer to that. So just a little deeper. Um, I think the called for blue is a little brighter and I went with more of a kind of a muted darker I guess just a little bit of a richer palette um, and I believe that this is on XJ design 46 count light nougat nougat Nikki nougat Nougat. I can't say it that way. Like nougat. Anyway. And again, I'm using kind of a, a slightly darker color grouping than what was called for. And if you ever want my color conversion, I'm happy to send them. I mean, I just, I'll probably just take a, like a photo of my color chart with what I've written next to it. Uh, so that, you know, I can share if people want to see it, but it's hard to tell even when the project's not done yet. But anyway, that's what I'm working on. It, it seems like this would be really easy and quick to finish, but it's actually kind of a big, there's a lot of stitching in there, so I'm not done yet. I still haven't even gone to the house yet. Okay. The next one, Margaret Ferguson, I saw this and fell in love with it immediately and had to get it. And that is this chart with that beautiful blue roofed house and the border. And I'm very impatient, and so I tend to, if it's available on a PDF, I'm typically going to just buy it and download it. it. Saves the shipping, you know, all the 
but anyway so so that's that I'm stitching this again on another piece I think this is called wild bird seed and I want to say it's the 46 count and this is with 100 threes so this is how far I've gotten and I love it the border it does have a few color changes but not as many as you would think more so in the leaves the flowers themselves are they're kind of repeats um, and they went pretty fast not that you you know want to speed through it but when you have 47 projects and most of them are big ass projects like these ones it's kind of nice to to get some progress nine years old it's impressive Margaret okay and the last hands across the sea that I am working on is this one and this is the Alexander's of Lynn Trathan, 1829. And I did a Leo, I did a Roxy Floss Co. conversion at the request of Laura. So these are the flosses. And again, some of them I think I've pulled maybe for another project, but I think the majority of them are here. So I'm using a piece of picture this plus sand and I do believe that this is also 46 count. Is that right? Forty count. Forty count sand by picture this plus. And that is where I'm at. It. So, it's coming out pretty. Okay, so that's all of the Hands Across the Sea charts that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, the next designer uh, that I've got a list of are the Scarlet Letter. So, again, the first one I did show just a couple days ago um, in my shop update video because this is on a piece of my linen. So this is called a Peacock Unicorn Badger. And this is a, the way it's charted is full coverage. The background green is DMC 936. And so I am using a piece of my arboreal linen. And I'm stitching this, this is 32 count, and I'm stitching this two strands of DMC over two threads. And that is where I'm at. So I'm getting ready for that satin stitch water that I think is really cool. These are the called for DMC colors. There are quite a few, which is why I'm doing this with DMC, because on 32 count with two strands, it just eats through thread, and the DMC is so beautiful. So that's where I'm at with this one, and it's really fun. Nikki Noodle's also working on this one, and it's hers is beautiful. But she's actually she's doing the work and stitching the the background. So kudos. She just did her whip parade, and her whips are all so gorgeous, and she has everything pressed. And I keep my the way I store my works in prop progress. Why is that so hard for me today? <laughs> The way I store my whips is that I roll them up onto acid tissue paper covered cardboard rolls. And that way 
they're protected, the, you know, the dust is sort of off of them and, and they're also, they don't get squished into a project bag. Now, obviously if I take them someplace, I have to sort of consider how I'm going to do that, but I just have a hard time. I don't like to have to iron them super frequently. Um, which, and it's also why I don't use, uh, unless it's a small enough project that I can see the whole thing on a Q-snap or on a hoop, I tend to not use those. I use scroll frames just because that way the fabric doesn't get, and the stitches don't get quite as compressed. Um, and that's just a personal preference thing. It's not, it's not right, wrong. That's just what I do. So. Um, I don't have to do a ton of pressing, but there are a few that needed a little, <laughs> a little work. So um, that's the first scarlet letter. And the next one is one that lots of people are working on. And every time I see someone pull this out and work on it, I'm like, I want to quit every other cross stitch, everything, and just work on this one. That's all I want to do. I just want to work on this, which and I don't, and I feel bad because I really want to stitch this. I want this, I want this on my wall. So my goal is to have this done this year. That's my, that's my goal. It's Ann Grimshaw, 1818. I love it so much. And this is where I am at. Man, I keep doing this. This is on 40 count light mocha by Zweigart and I'm using Roxy Flosco chalkboard, which is a nice soft variegated black. And that is where I'm at. Oh, I love this so much. I love this one. Every time I look at it, it makes me so happy. But Quaker medallions are a lot of stitching. They don't look, they, they look, you know, pretty straightforward, but especially this one, they're not all symmetrical. They don't all have the same number of sides. There's a little bit of irregularity in them. And so you've got to pay attention to the chart if you want it to look like, which I do, I want it to look exactly as it was stitched. So anyway, love it so much. I feel like we can all just go home now because that's all I want to stitch now. And then I looked at my next work in progress and I'm like, oh no, I want to work on that one too. So this is uh, my friend Gwyneth. This was her birthday start and we started this together at Stitch North last year and now it's rolling around to Stitch North again this year and have I got any progress on it? No. Embarrassing. But look at how pretty that is. Look at the border and the inner border, the beautiful blue windows on that house. Holy shnikes. Oh, it's so pretty. So I'm using a piece of 46 count Roxy Floss Co. unnamed fabric that I bought at the retreat when I was at Stitch North. Um, and it's just a nice, beautiful, creamy neutral. So that's as far as I got. And the flower border is so cool. It's just very beautiful and geometric and, oh, love it. And the fabric itself, there's just a little bit of slight variegation, so beautiful. Carrie's a wizard. God, I love it so much. So, what did I just say? All I want to do is work on Anne Grimshaw, but I also want to work on this one, so. I love cross stitch. It's so fun. Here's my chalkboard for Anne Grimshaw. And don't know where my floss for 
Helen Virtue is. I looked for it and I need to track it down. I may have pulled it out and put it into a different, like a travel project bag someplace, so cannot find it. But I will. Uh, the next one is Elizabeth Isles. Now this, and these, I can't find these flosses either. And this is a Roxy Floss Co. conversion that I did. So it makes me think that I pulled it aside to do something with it and now I can't track it down. But this is was for Laura's um, 60th big birthday start last year. And so I did a Roxy Flosco conversion for that as well. Um, now, lots of you know about Brenda's big birthday sale that just started on the 16th of January. And um, because I was in the middle of startup order uh, deer in headlights dumb. <laughs> I wasn't able to really, I didn't make a video at all in that period of time after Penny um, Tucker had messaged me, but there are lots of people who are, have highlighted that and it's a needle and flax um, Hawthorne and then um, beautiful sampler. And so it's on the, um, on Instagram, you can find it. I'm actually, ha I'm working on, and I'm not going to show it yet, but I'm, there is a chart that I have wanted to start for ages, and every time I look at it, it makes me think of her. And so in a future video, I'll talk about that, but that's the chart that I'm gonna do for Brenda's 60th birthday. So stay tuned at some point. Um, but her birthday is the same as my dad's, believe it or not. So anyway, happy birthday, Brenda, and uh, it's been really fun to watch all of the people who are stitching that um, project along with her. Sidetrack. So, Elizabeth Isles. Let's buy the Scarlet Letter. $17.99. And this is where I got last year. And I had actually stitched quite a bit of this because before I released or gave people the conversion, I wanted to make sure that I was... This is the first floss conversion I'd ever done, so I want to make sure that it looked cute on the fabric. And I believe that you can still buy this as a kit on the Evertote website. Pretty sure. Um, I don't think any of these... <laughs> every time... This is... I always forget about this, but every time I show this on my camera, this blue blows out into this weird seafoam green. And if you have ever been to a retreat and sat anywhere near me, I brought this... To, with me to Stitch North last year and people were like that is not at all what it looks like on your video. Anyway, it's a much brighter blue uh, that other people have used. I think I think um, Sarah from Sarah's Stitchy Spot I think that she used my floss conversion uh, if I'm not mistaken and she's Mistress Paige on Instagram and uh Anyway, hers shows up much, much more beautifully than mine does. But anyway, that's Elizabeth Isles. That's so funny. And I do have the project bag that Barry from Stitch Folk made specifically for the birthday celebration. I was lucky enough to get one. So thank you, Barry. All right. And then the last, oh, no, but I have two more, two more Scarlet Letter. So the next one is Elizabeth Masterton. I always have to look at that and say it carefully because I want to say Masterson. It's not, it's Masterton with the T. Ah, oh, look at how pretty it is. That big brown house and all of the rows of flowers and plants and the border so gorgeous and the trees at the bottom. So I did a, I'm using a Verisois, and it's so cool to look at, like a, the start that I have is red along the bottom border, so it's still pretty neutral, but the colors that are in the here that are, um, 
just like bright blue and bright yellow and gold and green. Ooh, so pretty. Um, I'm stitching this on a piece of linen that I dyed. This was one of my experiment colors um, that I don't think will end up in the in the palette because I one of the reasons that I had a hard time I couldn't get this to I couldn't reproduce this and um, you know again I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of big long story but I really stuck with colors that I could make again <laughs> so this was one that I just had a very very hard time trying to figure out how to get it to so it's it's not lost forever but it's not it's not something that I'm selling right now so I'm stitching this in hand I'm trying to learn how to do that a little bit and because the outer border is just a straight line it was kind of nice to have some practice in doing straight line stitching um, this is the back my sort of stitch in hand yikesness but that's all right Yikesness, that's a word, right? Anyway, Elizabeth Masterton. That's where I'm at. I've got the whole big square rectangle border all the way around, and it's very tight on this piece of fabric. And one of the reasons I said in like an earlier video when I showed this is that I just didn't want to give me an, give myself an out to put this into either a hoop or something else I wanted to stitch it in hand and so that's what I've been working on so again so pretty and so on the floor if dropping things is a drinking game And the last one is the New England Sampler. And I did show this a couple days ago as well. This is by the Scarlet Letter. The original was on uh, Green Lindsay Woolsey. And I am stitching this on a piece of, a little scrap of 40 count arboreal. So while I've had some things in the dye, I've been putting a few stitches in this. Let's get that out of the way. And this is the set of colors that I picked out. There, there may be one, it's, it's like a shade or two off the original, and some of these are the actual called for over soie that I had in my stash. I just haven't gone out to go and get other ones, so to get the ones that actually belonged in there. So I pulled the DMC, I kind of did a conversion, it's close enough and I'm, I'm liking how it's looking so I like these Quaker alphabets I have another one I'm going to show in just a minute and uh, I actually have an antique sampler that's a Quaker alphabet like this or it's a sampler with Quaker alphabet that reminds me a lot of this one and it also reminds me a lot of Sarah Allen which I'm working on and I'll show you in a few minutes but that's probably going to be the first reproduction that I do when I have time to do that so Exciting. It'll be sooner than later. But all right, so now uh, these are kind of in the one and two chart, or you know, one one chart or two charts by the same designer. But for the most part, starting to get into just like kind of the one offs. Starting to get into the one offs. So I'm like addicted to Fresca lately. That's my thing. A little too much Fresca. Okay, so next, Shakespeare's Peddler. This is the Spanish Mystery Sampler. And this is a very, very large sampler. It's beautiful. I love it so much. So, this is stitched on 46 count light nougat with the called for floss. And it's kind of huge. Uh, 
Oh, but it's so pretty. That top, the very top border and all of those little leaves and the different colors, like that variegation is so beautiful. The same thing down here with that band that's right above the peacock. Now, I made a mistake and that peacock is just a little too skinny. But these are the flosses. These are the called for. And it's a blend of NPI and some Gloriana and it's so pretty. And again, this is a Shakespeare's Peddler reproduction. And Teresa has this completed too. And it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to definitely have this one up and framed when it's done. But I love it so much. And even those white kind of ghosty stitches, they're much more visible in person, like up on this, this band right here with the blue. Um, they're hard to see, but in person you can kind of see that texture and they just really, they come out nicely. Ugh, I love this. I love it. I love it. Um, I have two Blackbird projects that I'm working on. One is from the Magical Mystery Tour series and I've completed the others. So this is the last one. This is Long and Winding Road. And as you can see, I'm stitching it on 32 count prairie grass by Seraphim with the called for floss. And that's where I'm at. I was just cruising on those other charts and then I got to this one, it was like, er, I don't know, it's kind of, I like it. I love it. It's beautiful. It's really, really pretty. And here are the flosses. These are all the called for. Got everything here, ready to go. It's the last one I need and I want to frame them kind of all together and I have a whole plan for it, but. So need to get back. This is actually kind of a good one to probably travel with just because it's a little bit bigger. So I have, some of the projects I'm working on are like tiny, 46 count, little tiny 103s. This one's kind of nice because it's just, I think I'm even stitching it. It looks like I'm doing it with two strands on 32 count. Pretty sure. So it's kind of fun. I like two strands on 32 count. It's, it's like doing a mirabilia. I love that. Let's finish it. <clears throat> this was for Betsy's birthday when she turned 60 a year ago. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count. Uh, picture this plus in the color Legacy. Pretty dark, pretty mottled. And I did a conversion, a Broxy Flosco conversion which I, again, I think I only have a couple of the colors together on a ring because I pulled them for other things. So, um, but this is, this is where I'm at. It's got a really pretty border. Nikki's got a lot more progress on this. Anyway, I love it. But man, this is huge. The sampler's huge. It's like, Many, many, many stitches by many stitches. <laughs> I don't remember how many. I think it's, I say it's like over 300 wide. And I do have the conversion here if anybody's interested. It tends to be a little more, it's not quite as vibrant. It's a little more sort of subdued. Like the grass is a little more like sand. It's a little, it's like a drier terrain type version. 
Yeah, 395 wide by 339 high. It's a big, it's a big old project. I get to meet Betsy at Stitch North in person for the first time. I met pretty much like last year there were quite a few of us there. Um, but Betsy, I get to meet Betsy and Darcy and D of uh, D's 20 Stitches going to be there. I'm really excited. I'm going to the April weekend of Stitch North. So gonna be fun. Coming for you, Betsy. We're gonna stitch together, drink coffee, eat snacks. All right, uh, I am working on this other big old project. This is Reflet Soie. This is Louise Lallier. Oh, look at how that, so the border is very beautiful and flowery. I'm stitching this on 36 count with the called for silk. I got the silk kit. And I think that this is just 36 count cream. That's why I got I tend to lean, I like plain palettes, especially for something this busy, because when you look at how many colors uh, are in that border, I mean, it's gorgeous, but oh my gosh, can I please, hello, hi, there it is, let's turn this, let's, let's give it a little fold, you can actually see it, there we go, it's so many color changes, there's like seven different greens, Uh, oh, it's so pretty though. This feels like a springtime project. I like to work on it when the weather gets a little bit nicer. Oh, it's so pretty, but it's enormous. Like this, what I tend to do is put in a piece of silky sliver. Is that what it's called? It's kind of a mylar covered um, single filament floss that you can like right here you can see it where I've got essentially I just go 10 stitches over not threads but 10 stitches over 10 stitches under 10 stitches over before I start stitching definitely before I cut my fabric especially on something this big and there are two reasons why I do that one is so that I make sure that I've got enough um, floss or enough fabric for the entire piece it gives me an idea of generally where I'm at now I don't use this to count off of specifically for like a band because when I'm doing that over under I'm moving kind of quickly and I could get off by a thread and I don't use it as my you know hard and fast counting method but it is really helpful as a tool, not only for that, but also to make sure that your fabric is cut reasonably straight. And as someone who has started dyeing linen and preparing that to go out to customers and surging a completed and pressing and all of that, linen is, ooh, it likes to mm, sort of get a little bit off and I tend to cut my fabric longer than it needs to be so that it gives me enough room to cut. And the measurements, and this is kind of an industry standard it seems like, the measurements are taken prior to the dye, dry, press, cut, surge process. But I do like to try and be a little bit generous when I'm cutting the yardage so that when it gets to the end of that process that you're still pretty close to getting like if I say it's going to be 18 by 26 or 18 by 27, that if I have that room, I can get it there. Some of it is determined, I'm getting, getting off on a tangent here, sorry, but some of it's determined by the width of the bulk roll itself. And so that's why you'll get different. Like 46 count is like almost a 60 
inch wide roll, whereas 36 count is narrower. And so you can only get so much out of the width of a piece or a yard. But I've had situations before where I started stitching and I had a two inch margin where I started and by the time I got to the other end of my piece I had like a one inch margin. And so by using a piece of this, and it's just because it was either cut a little crooked, it was surged a little crooked, and that doesn't necessarily happen just from the person that's dyeing the fabric. Sometimes it can be, there's a million different reasons why that can happen. But this just kind of helps to keep that safe so that you know that where you're starting, like on the bottom here, this bottom row, I know generally that this piece was cut and surged reasonably straight because I've got enough of a margin that I can that I can tell how far apart it's not it's not running sideways. So just a word to the wise, if you're going to start a really big ass project, do your best to at least give yourself a few markers, double check and make sure that where you're starting, if you use a corner gauge, that you know, look all the way across and make sure that those threads are not sort of running off of the off of the cut right? That the cut hasn't been crooked. And if you do find that with any of the pieces that you get from me personally, let me know and we will fix it. So, um, but yeah, just it's, it's a human process, um, cutting and getting through that much, that much linen. And so we do our best to try and keep it as straight as possible. But, um, that's my, that's my recommendation. I've always done that since I started because this piece back here, it was not like that. I got to the, uh, I got to one of the ends and it was like, oh man, I was all the way at the bottom and I had measured like the top and the right side, but I didn't measure down the other, like the left column. And so by the time I got to the bottom of the left column, there was like this much on the bottom edge and that bottom edge was just cut a little bit off. So you learn, but, um, Anyway, yeah, sorry. Side note. These are all of the silks or the majority of the silks for that project and it's gorgeous. All right. The next one I have two from Needlework Press. And I mentioned this earlier, this is Sarah Allen. This is the Quaker Alphabet. <clears throat> this one I think came out at market last year. And let's see, here it is. So I am doing this, I believe it is on a piece of r and I want to say it's American Chestnut. Mm, is that right? But it's a very, it's actually a really little sampler. I think this is 40 count and it's super cute, super teeny. And that row underneath here, those are queen stitches. And on the chart, there are a number of little motifs in there that are also queen stitches. Some of the strawberries, some of the leaves, they're gorgeous, but queen stitches so it's no joke. I'm going to have to learn a little bit better how to do that. This is the color palette and I kind of brightened it up a little bit. There were, I think there were a couple that I just didn't, either I couldn't get my hands on them or they were a little too, they didn't look like the photo on the front of the chart. And I know that that's always challenging. Photographing colors is so hard, but anyway, so these are the colors that I have kind of pulled to kind of play around with as I go. But I love it. Again, I love that Quaker alphabet. It's one of my favorite on a sampler. It just, it looks so cool. And I love it when there's like a set of black letters that are interspersed in there or dark, dark blue. So 
Love it. And the other one that I have, I have a Barely Start, and this is on Lucinda Fraser, 1866. This was originally stitched on a piece of perforated paper. The called for linen is 37 count Wild Honey Legacy Linen. And it is stitched with just a couple of 103s. I think it's just four colors, which are really pretty. There's like an olive green, kind of a green gray, a navy, and a sort of a cream colored, like a warm cream color. It's very windy out. Probably can't hear it, but I keep hearing stuff on the side of my house, like. Yikes. So this is my gobsmacking start. Hold on. Whoa. Anyway, the uh, one of the the border part of it is just a tent stitch which I'm kind of considering I want to do both directions and when I did the tent stitch I actually started and that first leg goes opposite what I normally use as my bottom leg. I don't think it's gonna matter but it kind of stopped me for a second I was like hmm. do I want to just do tent stitch? I don't know. I kind of like the way it looks especially with 103's I like the way it looks with both so, but I love that. I love that chart. I think it's really, really pretty. I really like the flowers. I like all of it. And then I've got, this is Ellen Reed's birthday stitch along from a couple of years ago. This is a GGR chart. This is Mary Griffith's. And I'm stitching this with the called for floss, one over two. And that is on Weeks Dye Works Beige. Um, this is what it looks like. It's the cover art. And I'm telling you, that bird kicked my butt. This long tail, trying to figure out where all of the different color changes go and counting it on the diagonal, I was like, oh. And then ultimately I was like, well, it's just a wild bird tail. Who cares? It looks cool. Lighten up. Get over yourself. Does anybody else do this? So I take an entire needle book. I use, I love Bowen 28s. It's kind of my favorite. And sometimes you're stitching with something and you don't want to just leave it parked, but you've got like two thirds of a strand of floss still. And if you're using over dyed or silk or something, and even DMC, I just don't like wasting stuff. You know what color, you know what colors you're generally using, but you're not going to be using it for a little while. So I will keep the needle threaded and then I just put like a, I keep that strand on there and just keep it in the book. And then I just kind of fold up the you know, I don't wind it because otherwise it gets tangled, but I just sort of smash it down and leave it. So it is just like, basically it's like a needle book, you know, like a stitched needle book, but I just leave it in the book and I leave that with a name in my project bag. Sometimes I remember to use it. Just me? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, 
This one is, in fact, uh, I mentioned her earlier, but Sarah from Sarah Stitchy Spot is working on this too. This is by um, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World by Julie, and she designs under the name of Hemlock and Rye uh, on Gumroad, I believe. And this chart, there's a Priscilla Dawes 1870, is so cool and wild and bright. And I'm doing the bright colorway. And I did a, uh, oh, and these are the, these are the flosses from Mary Griffiths. Pretty. But this is my Roxy Floss Co. conversion that I did for Thurza Priscilla Dawes. Rawr, look at them. They're so crazy. They're so bright. I love them so much. It's beautiful. Carrie is a wizard. So Roxy Flosco and I am stitching this on a piece of, I believe that this is 37 count. Hmm. Is this wild bird seed? Hmm. Brewer's malt. This is a legacy linen. This is 37 count brewer's malt. Kind of a yellowish. And that's as far as I've gotten so far. And I love the variegation on that green, that branch that's sort of popping up. This is really fun. I got all into it and started working on it and then, you know, like everything, you, you see a squirrel, but man, this is so much fun and it's so pretty. And every time I see Sarah's on her channel, she's doing the more muted colorway. It's beautiful, but I need to get back in and start working on this because this is really fun. So, yeah. This is going to be so long. I might have to break this into two videos. Uh, this was for a stitch along for Betsy Klager. This is Elizabeth Adelsey by Hedgerow Stitching. This is, it's almost done. I'm, it's embarrassing. I really should just have this done. But that is where I'm at. So I use some of the overdyed, some of the DMC, kind of a blend of both. And I love the color palette. It's super pretty. And I just need to finish it. So these are the colors. Like I said, I had some that called for some DMC. I like the blues, the greens, that orange in there is great. Just finish it, Joey. Sheesh. What the heck? Just finish it. Okay, the very first uh, sampler that I ever started was this one. And this is by Teresa Kogut, and this is called Pet All the Dogs. And I'm stitching that with DMC. It's one strand over two threads. And that, I think, and this is from like two years ago, I think this is on a piece of Weeks Tin Roof. 30, is it 32 count, 36 count? Yeah, 36, and it's one over two with the called for DMC. So that's what the chart looks like. Pet all the dogs. Yes, please, I will pet all the dogs. This is sweet, super cute. I've been pretty good at not getting sucked too much into the, all the market charts yet. Oh, because I have so many things that I want to stitch right now, but there's some really good stuff. And I did just buy on 
uh, Kitten Stitcher's website, Teresa Kogut has an exclusive chart that she did for Kitten Stitcher, and it's so cool. It's flowers and crows, and oh, it's so good. So I'm excited to get that, get my hands on it. And one other thing that I'm going to be starting to. So I figure if I have 46, 47, 46, I'm turning 53 this year, the end of April. That means I can definitely fit in at least six more starts this year. Right? All right, I need to reset and do the mostly not sampler part of the video, so stand by. Okay, so I had to do a little reshuffling, move some things out of the way. This is the second part where there are a few samplers, uh, but mostly not samplers. And so this is kind of um, just a variety of charts, variety of designers, and we'll keep rolling. I may end up breaking this into two videos because this is, this is getting pretty long. So I may do a part one and then this might be part two. So if this is part two, hi, <laughs> I'm Jody. I'm Trixie Tricycle, in case you forgot since the beginning of the video, since it was like an hour and a half ago. Uh, and this is my whip parade for 2023. All right, so the first one uh, in the mostly not samplers category, this is just a small, the next few are gonna be a bunch of smalls because that's the way I kind of have them sorted. Um, and this was just a piece of, uh, kind of a piece of scrap linen. And this is from the Primitive Hair 2022 cross stitch calendar. So every year Primitive Hair comes out with a cross stitch calendar and they're great. And they are, um, I love them. I've gotten them three years in a row now. And I just, I, I eventually, they're kind of smalls, but they're not that small. But they are kind of an ornament pillow size. So for 2022, these were all of the different charts. I love this tree down here for December. Oh, I totally want to stitch that. Unfortunately, you can't really, there you go. And a really cool house and the Halloween one. But the one that I started was up here this March. And it's hard to see the photo, but it was kind of a gold at the end of the rainbow. I modified it a little bit. So I'm sort of doing a pot of gold, but I'm putting a little heart on it instead. Um, so this is what I have so far. And it's, I love it. I need to finish it and make it a little pillow or a little hanger or something, but it was just kind of fun. This was me, again, kind of practicing with learning how to stitch in hand, which I'm still, it's going to take a while, but it was good. It was good to practice. And also this, um, this floss is kind of cool. It's a, what is it? It is, well, this is what it looks like. It's nice and bright. And it is the called for, it's called uh, Bradley's Balloons. I can't remember the name of the, the thread maker, Threadworks. Yeah, Threadworks with an X. So that's number 1154 and it's called Bradley's Balloons, which is the rainbow color. So the next one is by Michelle Bendy Stitchy and it's 1884 Lady Man. Quite the Lady Man. 
Um, I'm using the Roxy Floss Co. conversion. And this is as far as I got. Not very far, just a little ways. I need to pick this back up again. Maybe that's one that I'll bring to Stitch North with me and put some stitches into. It's kind of fun. The grass is just tent stitch. It's like sort of an alternating tent stitch. So it's almost like a herringbone. So it gives it really cool effect. But and that's on 36 count legacy. I picture this plus. So that's probably a piece of the Betsy's the uh, little birds linen. Next one, this was for Abby's birthday start a couple years ago. This is on um, 30 count Old Salem by Primitive Hair. Primitive Hair does linen, very pretty. And this is a carriage house samplings chart called Pennsylvania Pinwheel, which is just cool. So that's why I say it's mostly not samplers, but this is kind of a sampler because of the alphabet. And it's just really different, unusual. I love it. So I'm using um, floss that I pulled from my stash. It's a classic color works, a color in cotton. So it's a, I've got black coffee, ruby, and old gold. Ye old gold. Ye old gold. And here is my progress. And again, that's on 30 count Old Salem by, and it's just one strand. Is it one? No, I'm using two strands because it's 30 count. Two strands over two threads. Gosh, that's so cool. I really need to work on that again. Um, I'm working on this. This is a Chessie and Me called Alphabet Pumpkin. The photo on the front of the chart, screws, the crinkles. The photo on the front of the chart is very difficult to see um, because it's so tiny, even on the artwork there. But it's, it's a little raven on a pumpkin and a vine, and then the alphabet is sort of interspersed through the vine. Once again, I think I pulled colors out of my stash that looked close to what they had called for. And so those are the colors, and I just am using a piece of I think this is 36 count cream Zweigart and it's a long thin kind of a ribbon type chart and I I'm sure I probably just used a piece of linen that I cut off from another project so kind of a good use I always hang on to those it's cute I like the letters I like the alphabet on that one so Chessie and me alphabet pumpkin Um, I have this teeny tiny Beth Twist Heartstring Samplery has a series called Festive Little Fobs and they're sets of little charts where so like there's a seaside fob and the coffee edition and the there's a number of different series and they're so cute. And I'm doing the one that's right in the middle up here that just says coffee. And it's got one of those old school office like coffee pots. So that is where I am. And I just need to finish. I'm going to make that into a little zipper or not a zipper, a scissor fob. It's cute. It's another one of my 
stitch in hand practices. It's a good way to do it because it's just they're little, right? And I don't remember what floss I'm using. I think I just had something I pulled out of. I think it's 103's little silk colors that I think I've got in another project. Um, a couple years ago, I stitched two of the Barbara Anna Santa Claus charts. So this one was, and I finished them into little pillows. So this was Santa is Coming. And this is the one where he's on the snail. <laughs> so cute. Um, and then this one is called the Christmas Hair. Oh, Christmas is Coming. I think is what this one is called. And this is uh, the Christmas hair. So they're kind of cute. They sort of go together. You can stick them in a little display. Or theoretically one could. <laughs> if one had time. Uh, but I am also working on a third one now. This is on 32 count natural linen by Zweigart and this is called Through the Woods. So the reason I showed those other ones is because I actually adapted the colors because I wanted my um, threads and I wanted the linen to match. I wanted the linen to match for this one as well. So I turned it into a white stag instead of a brown deer because I wanted to have that mustard colored robe that Santa had in this one and in the other chart too. So I modified the chart and this is where I'm at. So I changed up the flower colors, changed up the deer. His robe has started and his leg, well his foot, he's got his boot in there, but this is, these are some of the colors. It's just DMC. So I'm doing two strands over two. And if I've ever said that I'm stitching two strands over one, that's a lie. I'm not. But I feel like I maybe said that in one of the other. Two over two. Called Not called for DMC. My own conversion DMC to make it match the other charts I have. Uh, the next one, again, this is, whoa, brace yourself for this start. This is called Three Crows by the good Huswife. Cool alphabet, Three Crows. Um, so pretty straightforward, but this chart was printed in 2000, year 2000, it's pretty old. Uh, so I'm kind of using, I, I, I pulled the DMC and then I am using some, uh, Roxy Floss Co. colors. So, this is my little conversion. Because I think it was, it might be NPI, so I probably could still get those too, but, um, but yeah, so this is what I decided to do, is to go ahead and just do a Roxy Flosco conversion for that one. And I'm fairly certain, I don't know, good, good housewife, I haven't looked, but I'm pretty certain that that one is out of print. Maybe not. This one is by my friend Darcy Cameron. He has an Etsy shop. He started designing cross stitch charts last year. And this is one of his early designs. This is called The Religion of Solitude and it's got an Aldous Huxley quote on it. And it's really cool. So, if you can see it up here, 
I, a few years ago I stitched Dracula's Confession by Lindy Stitches and it kind of has the same vibe just quote wise about kind of getting energy from hanging out by yourself. I love people but I tend to recharge doing stuff solo. I don't know. So I don't find it like like to be by myself isn't like a sad thing. It's like I'm pretty good at it. Like, and you know, my, my husband and I are sort of the same. So even though we're sort of hanging out, like we'll be here in the house, but he's doing something, I'm working on something and we can kind of go for hours with just keeping ourselves occupied. Um, so I appreciate that sentiment of just, you know, being alone with your craft and having some time to just kind of think and reflect and puddle around the house. So anyway, so this is that chart Darcy's chart but I did um, pull kind of the same color palette that Stephanie Webb used for Dracula's confession and so I had a piece of Lugana and so that's what this is it's a piece of Lugana this is murky picture this plus murky and I'm using similar colors to the other chart so that is where I am and I love this. And I said in my last video, what I might end up doing is just taking and just this little word here that just says solitude. I think I might just, that may be the part of the quote that I put on there and just keep it really simple. Because then you can see the the variegation in the sky, like that to me just looks like a really cool moody sky in the background. And, uh, but we'll see, I'll, I'll get it there and then see if it looks like it's finished to me. And if not, then I'll add in the quote and his name and all that. But anyway, so this is again by Darcy Cameron. Uh, he's got an Etsy shop. Go check out his other stuff. It's really good. And his videos are hilarious. So I'm also doing a uh, Mirabilia. This is the second one. First one is at my mom's. And that's the uh, Silver Moon Tea. Is that what it's called? I think this one is the Raven Queen. So it's this one. And I love it. I'm using all the called for colors, including the Krynic, the water lilies, all the beads, the DMC. And I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count Lunar by Be Stitch Me. I was in Brandy's um, Fabric of the Month Club for almost two years, I think, year and a half at least. And she, her fabric is so beautiful. It's just and I guess she has a brick and mortar shop now. It's fantastic and, and so, so, such nice fabric. So again, this is called Lunar and it's a, it's showing a little more blue on camera. It's actually more of just a kind of a nice gray, but that's where I am so far. I'm stitching this again because Mirabilia, you have to, stitch on 32 count in order for the beads to fit. So this is two strands over two threads. Some of the black actually is three strands because I wanted it to have that really dark coverage. And so the crow, I believe, that actually may be a Gloriana. Um, so apologize for the floating threads that are sort of hanging out there, but that's where I left off. So very pretty border. Nikki Noodles and I started our Mirabilia's together. I'm sure she's much further along than I am, but Mirabilia's fun. It's kind of comfort stitching. I don't know why, but it is. This is a lavender lace chart. This is called Enchanted Alphabet. Um, 
again, this photo is very small, very difficult to see. This chart, I do believe that you can still get. This is the photo of the chart. Hello, focus. You there? Oh, can you see? Hmm. There we go. So it's just a series of letters, and then it's got a great big baby in the middle. A baby with a bunny and a bird. I'm not stitching the baby. It's all right. It's just not my thing, but I am using Almond m and Silk, and Ymir released a, I think it was a holiday countdown set of silks. Oh, by the way, this is the Darcy Cameron palette. These are some, see, these are just some uh, philosophies that I pulled both from what I had left over from Dracula's Confession and then also some other ones just to sort of look at those together and see what they look like. So that's backing it up. Here's the Raven Queen. Are you new? So again, all the called for floss for the Raven Queen. Now, this is the set of amazing silk that was included in Ymir's holiday countdown box that she released. And I think this was, I think it was two years ago. I want to say it was at the end of 2021. And they're just so pretty. And I, I felt like I really wanted to do something to highlight these because I just love them so much. And the variegation on them is just so good. Oh, so good. Every, and so every single one I opened, I was like, oh, I want to stitch something with this. I want to stitch something with just this. So, and at the same time, uh, I think Christina, while Iris Naps had showed this, her finished, um, Enchanted Alphabet and I thought ooh, that might be kind of cool to do as almost like a color sampler. So I chose this piece. I think this is called uh, yeah this is Picture This Plus and it's a color it's 40 count gossamer and that's kind of what it looks like. It sort of looks like dragonfly wings kind of the red or the greens and yellows and um, just that really sort of dreamy variegation in the in the linen it's not doesn't have any like fold lines it's just really smeary and beautiful and I love it and I just am stitching like each letter in one of the colors from the collection progressively through and I'm sort of trying to keep them I put them in order what I thought they would look good sort of blending from one to the next and that is how I am following I'm just keeping it in order that they are on the ring and I love it and this one I really again don't we all say that in our whip parades I really need to work on this yeah yeah, that's the whole point. That's why we do this. Pull our stuff out and be like, oh yeah, <laughs> I have that. And this is the coolest. So, yeah. Um, this is, I started this ages ago also, and this is on a piece of 28 count Iris Lugana by Under the Sea Fabrics. And this is Funky Menagerie by Lindy Stitches. Cute, cute, cute. Mostly called for DMC. Although I did, I did make a Charlie. I had to make a Charlie dog right there. There he is, little turkey butt. Cute. I want to finish this and I want to make it into a project bag, like a good, awesome tote project bag that I can take with me places and I just love it. 
So, Funky Menagerie by Lindy Stitches. So, the, this project bag, if you're new here, hi. Um, I did a kind of a how to make a project bag or how I make a project bag tutorial a while back. It's on my, somewhere in one of the videos. I think it's in the not a tutorial section. It's separate from the regular floss two video, so it's in a different collection, but it's an upright vinyl front project bag and it's got a pocket on the inside so that you can put your chart or whatever in there. And then it also has a little, like a tab where you can hang your flosses or you can do whatever. And it's oriented upright because I was finding that a lot of the things I had, I wanted to be able to sit into a tote or a bin or whatever in my project and be able to actually see the charts upright. So this is what I called the so much room for activities project bag. Not selling project bags at the moment, but in case you're looking for a project bag tutorial, tutorial or you're wondering like, Hey, I haven't seen an upright project bag like that before. Here it is. And this one is the same. It's, they're kind of fun. You know, you can just put like cute little whatever fabric. Pretty inexpensive, relatively quick to make. Pocket. This Emma Congdon cross stitch for the earth. This book, fantastic. These are such an amazing bang for your buck, honestly. There are so many good charts in every single one of these books and they are entirely, entirely reasonable. It's like, I think the retail cost for these is $25. And there are like, I don't know how, So this is, I'm, I'm working on, pardon the post-it notes, I'm working on pattern number 19, which is this one that's got the four seasons. And I'm using a piece of even weave. I'm using the called for DMC, and this is, I believe, a 25 count even weave, and I'm stitching it over one. So this is small, but it's not, it's very stitch heavy. But the acreage is small. So that's why it's in with the sort of small patterns. These are all the DMC, most of them, I think I probably snuck a few of them out for different projects, but nice and colorful, very bright. And this is just, I don't even know the brand. I think I probably got this early on, like Joanne fabric maybe. So it's just an off-white even weave. But I really like it. I like doing full coverage. It just takes so long. Um, I have the whole fruit, the whole set of the fruit, um, botanicals like this one. So I started this last year. Um, this is the cherries chart. These come with the fabric, which is kind of a, uh, it's probably like a 30 count maybe. Anyway, that's as far as I've gotten on it. 
I'm stitching it two over two with the DMC, although it does have some, not specialty stitches, but it does have some shading, like quarter stitches and some other things that um, will, it'll just be like a half stitch. You can see down there in the lettering and in some of the shading behind the fruit itself where it's not a full stitch and it just gives that nice sort of blended effect. I really like this. It goes pretty quickly. Uh, and eventually I would like to have the whole set done. It'd be pretty in a kitchen or someplace. They're just bright, sunny. I like them. And these are the DMC for that. Pretty. Uh, I mentioned D earlier. And this is Cross stitch pattern by D's 20 stitches and the original artwork by Kari. This is the Trans Pride Tapestry. Uh, my terrible color printer printout. But sprinkles. I'm stitching this on a piece of Be Stitch Me fabric. Again, this is 32 count, and this is called Peony, P-E-O-N-Y, is the color of the fabric. And I'm stitching this with the DMC in close to called for colors, except I'm using the variegated DMC. So, Those are the floss colors that I'm using. And you can see it's got the variegated dark teal, variegated light blue, variegated light green yellow. And I've just gotten to the to the unicorn. I love this. Um I am, last year I started temperature chart. This is temperature space invaders. And I think I've shown this before. I stopped working on it because I was having difficulty seeing the space invaders on this fabric. In person, you can see them pretty well, but when you step back a little ways, it is a little difficult to tell. Um, I still have all of the flosses out and ready to go. I've got all of the temperatures for the year set up. And if I do if I do continue on it, I am going to continue with 2022 because that's when I started it. And I also downloaded her um, the birds, the temperature birds, which is really, I'm sort of loving that one too. I just don't know, like, Time-wise, I'm having a hard time committing to to getting that out every day. I know it sounds ridiculous because they're just teeny tiny, but as you guys know, it's just it's hard to map that in when you've got other things that you're working on. So right now, it's the <laughs> my plate's a little full, but I love this. This is also a piece of I think this is Be Stitch Me fabric, and I can't remember the name of it but I will put it in the description because I know I have it written down someplace. Uh, and isn't it gorgeous? Like just the overall color of the fabric and the patterning is so pretty. Like, wow, beautiful. But you can see when you step back from it a little ways, like these little aliens get, you know, little space invaders get lost. They get lost in space. Walk up. Do I have the fabric name in here? Uh, no, maybe. Probably somewhere. I'll find it. 
a while back I showed a I am working on a Hade, a Heaven and Earth design, full coverage piece. It's ginormous. It is finished size is 750 by 562. It's got it's the full max color. It's uh, the large format, contains 235 colors, and this photo is very difficult to see, but it's called Secret Carousel. And it is super cute. It's just like a forest scene with these beautiful light carousel and around the edges there's animals and I love it. But I started up here in this corner and it takes 50 skeins of uh, whatever this dark blue is. 939? 9, 9 something? That's so many stitches and it's just all it's all the same color. I think it's a full page at least. All the same color. I'm going to keep wheeling away at it, but it's going to take me I think I think I mapped out like if I have to stitch 2000 stitches a month on it, it's going to take me 17 years to finish it and that and I'm on the like 17 century plan right now cuz I touched it in like three months. I do like it. I will work on it. We are down to the last one. I've only shown this once before and I don't plan to show it um, all the time because it's not really a pattern. This is just something that I've done. Um, And this poem, called The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman, she read this, this is her, she read this at um, the inauguration in 2021, and I am stitching her poem on a piece of the Constitution fabric by the Primitive Hair and I'm using uh, Gentle Art Uniform Blue which is kind of a pretty variegated blue and brown and I am stitching the poem from her book over one on this fabric so this is where I am with that and I just, it's one of those, it's one of those projects that I just, I'm, I don't feel like I need to rush and get it done. It's a project that I pull out sometimes when I just like to think and um, I just, I love that poem and I thought that she was so optimistic and um, and I loved it. So anyway, I'm stitching that for me and I like that. I think that the fabric is really cool. I had a piece of it, but I know that there isn't really much, I, think, I don't remember what it was originally designed for, um, but I had it in my stash and I decided that that's the way that I wanted to use it. So um, I think that's all of my projects. So again, I think it's 47. I am going to probably break this up maybe into a couple videos because otherwise it's going to be two hours long and I don't know that I need to make, I don't know, we'll see. I'll see if I can piece them together and edit out some things and clean it up a little bit. But anyway, thanks for watching and I will probably be back in a couple weeks to just do a regular floss tube and maybe a tiny bit of linen shop update. But thank you again so much for watching. And if you like what you see, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And that's it. Be safe. Be nice to each other. Have a happy day to the best of your ability. Bye.